depending on how you want to look at it, this is where Hobart ends or maybe begins. We're here on the River Derwent at Bridgewater. Most bridges or infrastructure that's built around the world tends probably to be named after where it's located, but it's different here in Hobart where the suburb of Bridgewater is named after what we see behind us. There's been five bridges on the Derwent. Two of them have been demolished. One was accidentally demolished and rebuilt. And this one here behind us, well, it's been several different things over the years, but we're gonna start here and head down with the flow out to Storm Bay and stop at each one. A causeway was first constructed here in 1829. This was done with forced convict labour. 200 men using nothing but shovels and wheelbarrows filled the artificial isthmus by hand. An ornate viaduct like the one seen in Ross was originally planned, but due to practicalities, this was scrapped and the unfinished arches were filled in. They're still there though, buried under the mound. Initially a punt operated across the deep section of the river, but in 1849, the first actual bridge was installed. This was a swing bridge that used a pivot in the middle, allowing large boats to pass. When trains came to Tasmania, they also came to Bridgewater. In 1886, a train derailed here, leaving the locomotive hanging over the water. Two people were killed in the accident. It was found afterwards that the rails had failed to match perfectly when the bridge had swung closed. Construction of the current vertical lift bridge began in 1939, but it was interrupted by World War II and not completed until 1946. A small control house stands on the lifting section. A bridge keeper used to live on site and they opened and closed the bridge accordingly. But since the pulp mill further upstream stopped moving goods by barge, there is little need nowadays and no one lives in that house anymore. The elevated section only rarely gets lifted. Behind us here is the Bowen Bridge. It was built in reaction to the collapse of the Tasman Bridge. It opened in 1983. The idea behind it being pretty simple, get people from this side of the Derwent to the other. It has an unusual feeling to it. When you're driving across it, it kind of feels like you're still on the road. It doesn't really feel like you're on a bridge because it's so flat and so unspectacular. The Derwent's bridges are either named after their utility, like at Bridgewater, or they're named after explorers. This one was named after John Bowen, who organised the failed settlement at nearby Risdon Cove. Of the five bridges, it's the most boring, but it's also the best built, and will probably outlast the rest of them. To date, it's the only bridge that has survived in its original condition. Where I'm walking now isn't super interesting just to look at it if you didn't know what was here. There's just a bit of blue stone crunching beneath my feet. Come on dog. And there's some seagulls and there's a bunch of muck and it all looks like a big old pile. There's a couple of dudes fishing back there. I don't know if they even know what used to be here. This location was the site of a world record holder it was the world's longest Bailey Bridge. And it was only here for a little while, but it was very important to the people that used it every day. But of course, it's all gone now. And for whatever reasons, it's happily forgotten. Come on, dog. Invented by Donald Bailey, the first Bailey Bridge was constructed during World War II in Tunisia by the British military. Able to be assembled by raw manpower, it could be put together in hours rather than months. The swift assembly of the Bailey Bridge in Hobart saved the day for a lot of people in a very real way. When the Tasman Bridge collapsed, 30,000 Eastern Shore residents suddenly found that their former three-minute commute 
had turned into a 90-minute trip. Rickety and loud, cars had to line up to use it. With a single lane in each direction, traffic was limited to 20 kilometres an hour. At 788 metres, the Hobart Bailey Bridge was the longest of its type ever erected. On a long enough timeline, all bridges are temporary. The Bailey Bridge, more temporary than most. Out there on the water, halfway between the shore and the bridge, there's a big bit of concrete. And if you're driving towards the eastern shore on the Tasman Bridge, you can look out the window, if you're in the left-hand lane, and see it. And a lot of people in Hobart look down and wonder what it is. Well, it's a remnant. It's a ruin of the first bridge that crossed the Derwent River, the Hobart Floating Bridge. It's almost all that's left of it. Almost. Plans to bridge a link between the Derwent River's two shores date back to 1832, but it wasn't until 1943 that the first bridge was actually completed. The Hobart Bridge was designed by engineer Alan Knight. It operated as a toll bridge to begin with, but after five years became free, and since then there have been no toll roads in Hobart. The floating bridge facilitated suburban growth on the eastern shore, so much so that the population came to outgrow the floating bridge. Unable to handle increases in traffic, a decision was made to construct an entirely new bridge to replace it. When the Tasman Bridge was completed and opened to traffic, they had to dismantle the floating bridge pretty much straight away, and it was fairly easy to do because in the middle of the two main pieces of the bridge was a central pin. So all they had to do was pull it out and then they could use tugboats to force the two sides of the bridge away from the Tasman Bridge. Anyhow, the dog here is sitting on that central pin. It's been memorialised here for eternity and may in fact live out both the dog and myself. Hey pups. After the main sections of the bridge were taken away, the central lift span remained in situ for several years before being demolished. The eastern foot of the lifting section is what remains today, just above the surface. Designed by engineer Jude Seton from pre-stressed concrete girders, the Tasman Bridge took four and a half years to build, opening in 1964. Over here on the eastern shore, we've got the Tasman Bridge this way and back there is the former landing of the floating bridge. It's uh, not really used for much anymore except people that like to come down, maybe eat their lunch, they go to the McDonald's drive through, come down here, eat their food in the middle of the day or go fishing and have a couple of beers. We've got the boat, the Spirit of Hobart, going underneath the bridge right now, and it's smooth sailing. Now, a while ago, a different ship, a really big one, a bulk ore carrier, got about as far, almost exactly, as where the Spirit of Hobart is now. It's below the surface still. In 2014, the CSIRO were able to map the current positioning of the Lake Illawarra as it rests below the bridge. On a Sunday night in January 1975, the Lake Illawarra was making a routine journey up the Derwent towards the Zinc Works. Here is the only known photograph of the Lake Illawarra as it was sinking. Seven sailors died trapped beneath the fallen concrete. 
as did five occupants of vehicles that drive over the edge. The occupants of two cars left dangling on the edge of the bridge amazingly and famously survived. What's more forgotten is what happened to the people afterwards, the people that lived on each side of where the bridge joined. A third of Hobart's population lived on the eastern shore at the time and suddenly they were isolated. A study of police data showed that in the six months following the collapse, crime rose 40% on the eastern shore. Meanwhile, crime fell on the western shore. Car theft on the eastern shore doubled and neighbourhood quarrels and complaints tripled. The breaking of the bridge created a debonding of the shores on a psychological level. What was one place became two places. Two and a half years after the collapse, the bridge was reopened, its new pylons built around the wreck of the Lake Illawarra. While the bridge had been reforged, the city was left permanently different. The bridge is a familiar sight in the mind of the person thinking about Hobart's silhouette. It was built only to last a century, and at around 60 years old, its end period is approaching. Perhaps not far off, Hobart will have to begin the need to imagine a life beyond it. It is a safe expectation that any child born in Hobart today will likely live to see a different bridge where the Tasman currently stands. How it shall look is an undecided mystery.